Hey everybody! Today I'm going to share a scenic card with you, a very simple card just using some sponging, a little watercolor, and the Misty. Now I am giving away Misty on my blog today, so happy Cinco de Mayo to you! You might win! I'm using the little photopolymer set with a sailboat. It's called Greetings From. This is from Stampin' Up! And I've stamped the sailboat on a piece of my frisket masking tape. It was just the right width for this little tiny boat. And my card base is actually watercolor paper that's already folded into a card shape. It was left over for my retreat. And so I'm using Smoky Slate to stamp the sailboat in because I'm going to do no line watercoloring. So it's a nice light ink that'll give me some guidance, but also fade away as I paint it. Now I'm positioning this teeny tiny little boat onto the watercolor paper. It is cold press watercolor paper. It has some texture. So you need to make sure that your masks really are stuck down. Now when you're doing an ocean scene like this, you don't want your card to look like a scene from some apocalyptic Bruce Willis movie about the end of the world where the ocean is tilting up at sort of an angle. <laughs> so I'm using my grid paper to make sure that my card is positioned up and down straight and that the tape is using the grid lines to form a straight horizon line and not an apocalyptic Bruce Willis horizon line. Now I did accidentally pick up my little boat. Like I said, that texture makes it a little less clingy. But I can stick that back down and then try to get that tape positioned correctly again. I, I keep moving the card and the tape when I'm doing this. This is why it takes 25 minutes to make a card. This card took about 24 minutes start to finish. I've sped up some parts of the video, but just so you know how long it took. So if you think you don't have half an hour to make a card, I would like to give you some suggestions. I recommend um, not doing laundry, not cooking. There are lots of things you can cut out of your life that will leave you a ton of time for crafting. And I have a whole list of them, so just ask me. Now I'm using a Ranger ink blending tool in this gorgeous new distress color, which is called Mermaid Lagoon, perfect for an ocean. And it is a very oceany blue. I just think it's beautiful. I want it to be pretty saturated. And since this is watercolor paper and not cardstock, you're going to need to put a little bit more ink down to get sort of that jewel tone that this color has. And just watch your tapes. I moved mine a little bit. Then to do the sky, you'll want to put the tape back down maybe a little bit inside the ocean line because you don't want there to be a white gap in between the sky and the ocean because that could also indicate a crack in the fabric of the universe. And that's not really what you're going for when you're making a card. Now I'm using my little mini Distress inks. I love how the foam fits into the bottom of the ink pad, so I've actually switched to the minis. I like them a lot. For the sky, I'm using dried marigold first, and then I will add some wild honey just to increase the yellow a bit. And then you have to have a little rosy glow when you have a sea scene, and so that color is worn lipstick. And I'm not putting that all over, just at the horizon line. And then you can always blend these colors together by using the same colors on top of each other. They blend really nicely. And I'm just warming up the sky a bit. The texture of the watercolor paper also really does a lot for the sky and the water. Gives almost the appearance of clouds and some little ripples in the water. So now I've left my boat nice and white to do my watercoloring on. This isn't going to be a very complicated watercoloring project. I am only going to use a few neutral colors. And these are my 
Kurataki. There are so many words in the name of these watercolors, but you know which ones I'm talking about. There'll be a link on my blog. I just call them Kurataki. But they are gorgeous and in an easy format to use. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a brown and a gray primarily for shading on the boat. And I'm just mixing them on my acrylic block to do that with. Now, typically when I watercolor, if I'm using an aqua painter, I leave no water in the barrel. And that's because I can get a lot more control if I'm using a dry brush and then dipping into a container of water. However, you can get some fun effects by using one of these medical washcloths. I'll have a link to those on my blog too. And painting with really wet watercolor and then just dabbing. Since I want this boat to be the lightest part of the scene, this is a good way to remove color and add highlights without spending a ton of time doing detailed painting. So play with either having the water in your aqua painter or not having it in your aqua painter. And you'll notice that you get two di very different effects. So I'm filling in a little bit of sky behind the sails. Now I know no nautical terms whatsoever. I am a prairie girl. I don't particularly like large bodies of water. So if I say something wrong about this boat, please understand. I don't know any better. But on the top of the mast, I think, is a cute little flag, and I painted that in the brightest red. Then I'm adding a little bit of shading underneath the boat, just a little shadow, and giving the sails just a little more color with that super wet watercolor and then dabbing it off. So now that the boat is finished, we're going to add a sentiment. And I'm using Adventure Awaits. This is a fun, big, bold stamp set. I love how big the greetings are. But because I'm stamping on watercolor paper, I have to use the Misty, and you'll see why. This is actually what sold me on the Misty, was being able to do sentiments perfectly, even if they aren't inked properly the first time. And I've chosen one of the larger sentiments in the set that has some big solid areas and so you'll see why this was so important. This one says a calm sea never made a skilled sailor and that's true. Our version of that saying in Texas is suck it up buttercup. Stuff happens. You learn from it. Now I noticed that this greeting has nice horizontal lines behind the greeting in the center of the circle. And so that was very easy just to line up on my horizon line. And so that's how I'll know everything is straight. So you just want to make sure the cardstock is tucked in the corner before you stamp the first time. I'm using VersaFine ink. And even if I were stamping this on smooth cardstock, you would still have the potential to maybe not be fully inked, and that's why this process works so well. But on watercolor paper, it definitely has the potential not to be fully inked the first time you stamp it. So I'm going to put that down. I actually have the sentiment going just a little bit off the left side, which is a look that I like, kind of a, I don't know, just a fun design element. Now see, this is the point at which you would start weeping uncontrollably and saying unladylike words if you didn't have a Misty because that card is a hot mess with that greeting like that. But all I have to do is stamp it again. So just make sure your card stock's securely in the corner again, put it down, and I just keep going until it's completely filled in and it's just a miracle. It just starts to look better and better and better each time I stamp it. I think I ended up stamping it maybe six or seven times until it was a nice crisp black. And I never had to worry about it moving or being out of place. So maybe you could say a calm sea never made a skilled stamper. But that is what it looks like when I'm finished. Just a fun little scene and a perfect sentiment. I hope you've enjoyed this. Head over to my blog for a chance to win a Misty. And thanks so much for watching.